this is a video demonstration of the web service interface of our megapixel cameras and I'm going to be showing you some of the things that you can see and configure in this camera. Uh, to access the camera I'm going to be using uh, Windows XP and Internet Explorer uh, 8 version. I'm going to type the internal IP of the camera and this is the main interface of uh, the camera itself. So once you get to this uh, username and password window, the only thing you got to do is just log in and the username and password is admin and you will see the, uh, the camera interface or the camera picture. Here on the top right you can see uh, certain features that will allow you to do certain things. For example, uh, if you have alarm inputs and outputs on a particular camera that supports alarm inputs and outputs, you can trigger them from here. You can also um, do digital zoom from here. For example, if I uh, click the digital zoom option, I can just make a square and it will basically zoom to that area. Very easy. And to go back, it just right click. I'm just going to click um, uh, this uh, option right here and uh, this will take a snapshot of the picture and then you can see this is a snapshot I just took and from here I can just print it or I can save it to my desktop or I can send it to an email. It's uh, extremely easy to do and then uh, this option right here is this triple snapshot. When I click on it it will take three snapshots consecutively and again I can just uh, simply save them or print them. If you have microphones connected to a camera that supports microphones, you can enable it from here. If it supports uh, two-way audio, you can also enable that feature from there. Here, this uh, question mark, uh, it will basically open the help uh, file on the camera and it will tell you what each of these functions uh, are capable of. And it's um, very informative. You can also see, uh, you know, you can click on these links and it will basically uh, unveil more information I'm going to jump to PTZ. This particular camera supports PTZ controlling. What it means is that you can connect the PTZ camera to it and from here you can control that camera. Although you cannot see the picture of the camera, you can control the camera from here. So this is what is this for. Playback. Now the cameras that support SD card are, are capable of playing back files. If they have an SD card inserted on it that you can basically uh, tell the camera to record to it and it will work just like a DVR um, and from here you can uh, search for uh, footage by just simply clicking this uh, this legend right here actually what it tells you is it's a motion events you can see here there are different ones these are filters you can either check the ones that you like or the ones that you want to uh, look for and in particular case, uh, this, this camera is recording based on motion, so I can just click a motion. I can actually change this view to a 24-hour period, a 2-hour period, or a 1-hour period, or 30-minute period. So um, I can just click in it, and you can see right here, uh, for example, I was focusing the camera, and you can see that is uh, a motion event, and I can just basically click on any of these areas, and you can see the motion that the camera recorded. It's uh, very simple to use. If you have audio, if you're recording audio, you can uh, listen the audio from here or you can just disable the audio while playing back at the same time. You can play uh, next frame if you want to or uh, play slow motion or, or fast uh, motion as well. I'm going to pause this. And here you can see the calendar. You can select the file type. In this case, it's only DAV and it's retrieving this information from the SD card inserted on the camera. Let's jump to the settings of the camera. Under conditions, you can see you can uh, adjust uh, uh, a lot of features here, brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. cetera. Uh, you can change the exposure mode if you want to. If you wanted to uh, do it manually, you can uh, do so as well. Um, you can uh, flip the image if you want to. You wanted to put it like this. You can just simply click on a mirror and turn on that feature. There are many features here that you can select uh, on this particular camera. Under profile management, you can configure uh, on a schedule how the camera is going to go from uh, black and white to color, etc. Under video, you can configure uh, the resolution of the camera. This particular camera can go up to 3 megapixels. 
and uh, here you can configure how is it going to be recording and how you're going to be viewing it from your phone. Uh, also, you can view uh, this camera live using the substream if you like to. On this tab, you can configure snapshots based on timing. Overlay, you can change the titles of the camera if you want to. The path is where it's going to be storing uh, when you uh, take a snapshot or record a video to your computer. Um, this is where it's going to be recorded. You can change this as well. Uh, we can go to audio. If your camera supports audio, this is the place where you enable it. Let's go to network. On the network, we can configure the IP address of the camera itself. You have uh, two versions of the uh, IP protocol. Uh, under connection, you can configure the ports that the camera is going to be using. I mean, there's many features here that you can configure. You have uh, uh, dynamic DNS uh, configurations you can do in here as well. Uh, you can tell the camera to send you email notifications if you want to. Uh, UPnP, you can uh, auto port map any of the ports of the, of the camera if your uh, router supports UPnP or if your router is UPnP enabled. Uh, you can configure QoS, uh, quality of service. So you can have uh, certain parameters here configured so your camera can't um, uh, manage the way it's uh, streaming video over your network. Under event, we can configure here uh, the video uh, detection portion of it. Uh, and here you can tell the camera to uh, every two seconds or wait two seconds before uh, motion is triggered. Also, you can configure under area, the areas that you wanted to have motion. You can delete the entire areas and then select the areas that you only want motion or only trigger motion in this particular areas as well. You can uh, change the sensitivity and the threshold. Um, I'm going to cancel this. I'm not going to save this. And uh, also you can tell the camera to activate a relay if you have a relay connected to one of the inputs of the camera. And um, also you can go to video masking and uh, tell the camera to record when uh, the camera is covered by, uh, you know, by your hand or something like that. And then uh, it will also record or send you an email or uh, uh, activate a PDZ or take a snapshot when that happens. Uh, under alarm, you can configure the alarm inputs and outputs. How are they going to behave is it, if it's normally open or normally closed? Under abnormality, you can uh, configure the camera to send you an email when uh, there is no SD card, when uh, the capacity of the SD card is being uh, reached at a certain percentage, when there's a problem with the SD card. I mean, there's many uh, other features that you can configure here, and many other uh, notifications that you can configure in here. Under storage, you can uh, set the schedule of how the camera is going to be recording. This particular camera is configured as motion detection, but you can uh, configure it uh, based on periods, or you can configure uh, the camera to record 24-7 in motion or alarm every day uh, of the week. I mean, it's very simple to configure. Uh, also, you can uh, uh, set the snapshot schedule and the holiday schedule as well. Destination, this is where the footage is going to be stored. You can, uh, if you choose local, obviously it's going to be uh, storing the footage on an SD card inserted on the camera. And you can select the type of events that you wanted to store on that um, SD card. Or if you have an FTP server, you can uh, also tell the camera to store those uh, uh, files in, in the FTP server location. On the local, you can manage the SD card. You can see the capacity of the SD card. This uh, camera supports a 32 gigabyte micro SD with an adapter. So it's actually an SD card um, in up to uh, 32 gigs in class four. Under FTP, you can configure your parameters for your FTP server. On the record control, you can tell uh, the camera how it's gonna be recording, how much is gonna be pre-recording when an event happens. Uh, what to do when the SD card is full, if you wanted to override the files, or if you want to stop recording. Uh, you can tell the record mode if you want it auto based on the schedule, or 24-7 or completely off. And what stream is going to be recording, if you want it to be recording the highest resolution or the lowest resolution or substream. Under system, you can go to the general settings and configure the device name, for example. You can change the date. You can enable uh, DST. You can uh, synchronize this camera with an NTP server. 
under accounts, you can add the accounts that are going to be accessing the camera from the network and you can assign groups as well. Under PTC settings, if you have a PTZ camera connected to uh, this particular camera that supports PTZ, uh, you, here is where you configure the parameters of uh, the PTZ camera. You can configure here the protocol of the PTZ camera, the address, and the baud rate. Under default, you can default the entire camera, and uh, this will basically erase any configurations you have except for the IP address. So uh, if you wanted to reestablish the configurations of the camera because something got misconfigured, you can just simply uh, hit default and, and the camera will be back to uh, factory settings. Import and export, I can import my configurations or export from a file and then uh, import those configurations to the camera very easy. This is very handy when you have uh, a lot of cameras that you have to deploy of the same kind. What you do is you configure one and then you export those configurations and then you import those configurations to the rest of the cameras and then that will uh, alleviate the amount of times that you have to spend trying to configure each camera individually. Auto maintenance, you can tell the camera to reboot at a certain day or every day. You can also configure to auto delete all files of your SD card, very easy and very uh, practical. Under upgrade, you can upgrade the firmware of the camera uh, you can either use uh, this interface here or you can use the config tool. Uh, we recommend to use the config tool, it's actually easier and you can deploy many cameras at the same time if they use the same firmware file. Under information you can see the version of the camera. Under logs you can search for any type of logs you want. You can uh, find a particular uh, log that you wanted to see any event that happened with the camera you can just simply click on it and you can see what happened at that particular time and the type of event. In online users, you can see the user that is currently logged in into the camera right now. Uh, at this point, it's only me. So you can see uh, the username they use and then what time they logged in. Under alarm, you can display uh, the uh, alarm types. That if something happened, that trigger one of the alarms on the camera. If you have any alarms uh, connected directly to the camera, you can see them from here. If nothing happens, you will not be able to see anything, but it's very uh, handy when you wanted to see any type of alarm uh, events that uh, the camera has recorded. And lastly, you can see, uh, again, this is the main interface, and then you can actually change the substream uh, configurations if you want to. If you wanted to watch the camera using the substream view, you can do so by just clicking uh, the substream uh, button or the mainstream button. I hope this has been informative to you and thank you for watching.